Welcome to Yung Division. I am Yung. Let's continue discussing basic issues in climate research since 1860, when infrared absorption by water vapor and CO2 was first observed by John Tyndall. Today, I will throw a stone at two birds. One is, naturally, Sabina Hausenford. Another, her friend, Tim Palmer. For two reasons. One, the background of the topics needs to be explained further. Another reason is Tim had been an author for the IPCC reports. His influence on general public's opinion should not be underestimated, as he made some remarks from time to time as if he were a well-trained theorist. Indeed, he got his PhD in general relativity, but as he admitted, he didn't know anything about maximum entropy then. So are you ready? I mean to like, to share, and to subscribe, as well as to make your little bell activated. Okay, let's go and have fun. We all know that climate and weather are different things. For example, the mean air temperature near the surface has been remarkably stable over the past century. By way of contrast, the diurnal surface temperature change can be over 20 or 30 Kelvin in Australia. Therefore, it is a common sense to build different models for climate study and weather forecast, because you wouldn't buy the same toy for mice and elephants. Yet Tim Palmer, Sabina mentioned him in her talk, has been trying to massage climate and weather models for years as doing Chinese Tai Chi. In particular, he advocated the climate model and the weather model be unified as he believes the ultimate goal should be to predict extreme weather events in terms of CO2. In his recent article, Tim asked climate researchers to do some so-called short-term test for long-term estimate, namely to evaluate climate model by testing its weather forecast performance. It was based on a strange trial and error method Rodwell and Heen proposed almost 20 years ago. Notice the proposal was motivated by some weird simulation results that give climate sensitivity up to 11 Kelvin rather than less than 4 Kelvin since Arrhenius. But the simulation turned out to be unrealistic, so their method was thrown into garbage bin. In 2020, Tim was emotionally charged again. Why? A relatively new climate model that produced 5.5 Kelvin climate sensitivity was used to run a six-hour test by a team at the British Met office where team used to work. They claimed the certain errors were reduced somehow in their short-time simulation. Without interpreting the new result based on physics, Tim declared that some of the best current evidence has been found for climate sensitivity that could indeed be higher than 5 Kelvin. Unfortunately, as reported by Sabina, nobody has paid much attention to his claim. According to Tim or him, one needs to have an access to a climate model that can do short-term weather forecasting too, which is weird. Besides, one must match the initial conditions for the modeling, otherwise the chance to repeat result seems slim. This seems as ridiculous as to use a long-range missile to deliver a box of the pizza. I wonder, does the team really understand the origin of the climate sensitivity at all? The current dogma says, an imbalance might appear in the outgoing long-wave radiation due to increasing CO2 that blocks the surface radiation. And the troposphere is obliged to be heated up to fix that 
imbalance without any detailed descriptions. As I first shown last year, these hypotheses cannot be justified because the surface infrared radiation is imagined. In other words, no infrared radiation by the surface and hence no strong CO2 absorption or blocking. Although this is what is still fabricated in all climate models nowadays, just as a chip in your mobile phone. Granted, there are a number of different thermodynamical processes that are driven by different subroutines in a climate model that is primarily designed to predict global warming in the time frame of the century. How could its long-term property be evaluated at such a short period of time? As I explained in my previous talk, the climate sensitivity or ECS is limited by the slope in this hypothetical linear relation, similar to the young mills gauge theory that acts as a constraint for choosing proper Lagrangians in quantum field theory and the standard model. At most, the ECS value generated by different individual climate model can allow to estimate a distribution or PDF, a probability distribution function, around its ensemble mean, which is treated as a priori independent of climate models. But this is by no means for one to expect such model dependent ECS could be arbitrarily large as suggested by Sabina Hausenfeld. She's not talking about the physics, she's talking about astrology. I wonder why didn't Tim Palmer to ask Sabina to shut up, unless he also thinks so. So far as I noticed that Sabina has not told you how Manabe and Vesserold worked out the climate sensitivity from their single column climate model in 1967, although she has quoted their result several times in her talk. Here it is. In fact, Manabe only used a dozen of the layers to represent the real atmosphere without invoking the Navier's Tox equation at all. Although they extended their 1D climate model to 3D, with the uh, general circulation later, it is important to know that their prediction for the climate sensitivity remains almost the same. By watching his talks over the past years, it seems Tim is only interested in solving long linear equations with higher spatial resolution, as if climate modeling were a digitally extended numerical weather prediction, or NWP. Of course, this is untrue, as he has completely omitted the essence in climate research since 1896. By the way, do you remember Sabina was talking about extreme weather event attribution? Some crazy people wish to sue CO2 providers for each extreme weather event. Why did he discuss that? Because he knew Tim also was very keen about it. Besides, both Tim and Sabina seem to have been excited since the mean temperature of the 2023 was higher than usual. Could it be the climate sensitivity generated by climate modeling too small? It sounds rational and considerate for them to ask this question for the general public. But in doing so, they have forgotten that the objective of doing climate research, namely to find the long-term trend, either warming or cooling, instead of focus on every spike in the random data. The annual mean temperature will always oscillate about its long-term mean value. Year 2023 and the year 2024 would be no exceptions. In summary, estimates of the climate sensitivity should be based on basic law in physics, rather than from running a climate model in an extremely short period of time. So far, both Tim Palmer 
and Sabina Hausenford have been misleading the general public that such fundamental issue might be resolved by means of computer simulation instead of doing instrumental observation and basic research. Meanwhile, please watch my other talks over the past years so that you know who I am and what I have been doing in climate research. Thank you for watching. Thank you for donation. See you next time.